Lock and Load podcast is sponsored by Lock and Load Firearms, Connecticut's number one rated gun store and pistol permit class on Google. Come check us out, 1573 Meredith Waterbury Turnpike in Southington, Lock and Load Firearms. Lock and Load podcast is also sponsored by Patriot Wear Holsters, custom-made Kydex holsters locally made in Waterbury, Connecticut, www.patriotwearholster.com, and use code LNL podcast for 10% off your purchase. Orders available for shipping or pickup at various locations. Welcome to Lock and Load Podcast. My name is Josh. And I'm Michelle. And we're here to talk to you about Connecticut 2A issues. Our special guest today, his name is Art, and he is from the Marksman Den in Branford, Connecticut, which is a uh, gun store down in Branford. So, uh, Art, why don't you give us a little bio about yourself? Um, grew up in Bridgeport, Stratford, and uh, career plumber. Involved in a bunch of things over my lifetime, and uh, a friend of mine who happens to be the partner in my in my store there, Cody Millett, he goes to me, "Hey, we should open up a gun store. Sounds like fun, right?" And he went, "Yeah, <laughs> can't great. wait. That sounds interesting." What was Cody's logic behind this? I, you know, he wanted one. He wanted one. <laughs> he didn't. He didn't have one before, so he didn't realize what he was getting into. <laughs> what did Cody do beforehand? Uh, he is a. He actually. So I used to own a roller skating rink in Monroe, and he came to work for me when he was 15, and uh, I've been stuck with him ever since. Yeah. Can't get rid of him like glue, <laughs> you know? So, um, you know, I've been shooting a, a long time hunting. I was in I was uh, national. I was in Camp Perry for a few years. Uh, Stratford Pallets fully gave me a full ride for that for quite a few years, which I greatly appreciate, you know, cool. that type of stuff. And, uh, you know, all position, short range, long range. Uh, I mean, they gave me the rifle, the ammo, everything. My growing up, pretty poor, you know. That's neat. Just, yeah. So that's how I got really involved with that. And then um, my family's been in the heating business, you know, for as long as I can remember. And, uh, you know, so it wasn't really, I said, let me become a plumber to add to the heating side of it. And, you know, people, some things just don't work out with family relationships. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. So, you know, that brings us to where we are uh, at the store. You know, I'm still, you know, I I still work seven days a week, you know, 12, 15 hour days. And, you know, we do what we can. So in the the store is uh, one of those things that, you know, I'm getting older and it's a lot less uh, on my body. And, you know, it's physically less stressful. Yeah. Yeah. You know, guns. Mentally. It'll be be fun. (laughs) (laughs) On the fun aspect. Um so how long have you been open? Uh, well, two and a half years. Okay. Two and a half years. Um, you, do, do you have other, uh, we'll call it competition down in Brantford? Any other well, you s- know, main, I, like stores? Yeah, there's um, there's a place on, I think there's a place, two places on Route 80 up that way. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't look at them as competition. I got to be honest with you, I have a different outlook on business is that there should be enough for all of us to survive. Yeah. Let's share our knowledge and like I'll call up those guys and be like, Hey, you got this gun or you got this ammo? Yeah. All right. I'm sending this guy over to you. They're mm-hmm. like, really? What? What? You know, I don't have a problem with that. Yeah. If I don't have it and they need it, I'd rather them go to another store and support the local firearm stores because that's really what we need mm-hmm. right now. That's a, it's, it's a, you know, with the uh, climate of um, online shopping and, all that, you know, uh, and everything's available at your doorstep in two days. Well, and you also have Bass Pro right down in 95. Bridgeport. Yeah. So it's not that far away from you. Well, almost it's like you go over the bridge in New Haven there and it's like a whole nother world. <laughs> you know, it's like it opens up to something different too. Yeah. But, you know, I know guys, you know, there are big box stores and, you know, I, I, I'm, for me, I'd rather shop at the little guy. Mm-hmm. You know, you get better customer service, you know, and, uh, you know, maybe you don't always get the best deal, per se. Right. Because, you know, they have that huge buying power. Like I tell my customers, you know, Bass Pro sends the truck, says, you know, you buy 40, 50 million, million rounds at a clip. Let me know when it's full. We'll come pick it up. So, yeah, yeah I can't compete with that. Nobody can. Right. I think one of my biggest gripes, <laughs> and we were talking about this earlier, is the online sales. Yeah, it's crazy. Like, <clears throat> these guys, you know, sit at home, they shop around. And they save pennies and then don't support the local guys. Mm-hmm. Like, <clears throat> by the time you buy the gun, pay your Shipping. taxes, 
pay your shipping, your insurance sometimes, depending on the price of the gun, depending on the shipper. Transfer fee. Transfer fee. Mm-hmm. Cool. You saved $5.23. If that, because then you have gas like, in getting yeah. to the store that you've transferred and it to. I think one of the most important things is you have that power or um, you have to wait. Like, if I just have it in stock, you can have it now. Yeah. Like, I like, like people are in, impa- people in general are impatient. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, I like, ra- I like, if to I want touch it, it, I'd rather have it. Yeah. <laughs> I like touch it, feel it, go, ooh, this guy could see this in my yeah. safe. You know? I, yeah. I'm not, make I sure the gun's comfortable in my hands. Correct. Mm-hmm. You know, one of the most important things out there. You know, mm-hmm. that's, that's, that's a good point because what we do, especially with new shooters and, What's the purpose? What is it that yeah. you're looking to do? I I, bake it, I I bring it down to three categories. You have your compacts, your midsize, your full size. Your compacts are great for carrying, not necessarily great at the range. Your your midsize are maybe good for both aspects of it. You know, mm-hmm. not a little harder to carry, but better at the range. Then your full mm-hmm. size, you're not really carrying a full size, especially in summer. You You'd know. be surprised. Oh, no. There are those guys out there that can do it. <laughs> well, open carry is no longer legal now, so it's a little more difficult yeah, to do Yeah, I mean, they're be- much, much better at the range. You know, anything that's a little bit heavier, and, and it's better at the range, and that's how we fit it. Into we get z- we get people with 5-inch 1911s that want appendix regs. Oh, no. On a regular basis. Like, this isn't a once-in-a-blue moon. Like, 5-inch barrels, six. we've had multiple people asking us for the what is it? The Glock forty yep. with the six oh, the inch barrel, slide, yeah, inside the waistband. Wow! Uh, now uh, I carry uh, the what's maybe the, they're the compensating. I, I I carry nineteen eleven <laughs> compact in, in that, but I cannot carry my midsize. In there. there's no way. I, I, so no. let me address one thing to the viewers that I forgot to do in the beginning. Um, sorry, this isn't a normal video. Um, the guys <laughs> okay. that are watching this or listening to this on Spotify, you don't know. Uh, we were having technical difficulties today in recording. It's my fault. Um, yeah, it could be. Who knows? <laughs> I brought the dark cloud. Um, so people that are watching this on uh, YouTube and just watching a little line go up and down uh, with their voices, sorry. Um, everyone else, you don't know the difference. Um, and we're still here. Yeah. We're still here. We're, we're <laughs> somehow, sitting here. Somehow you know? I feel like I'm getting gypped. I don't know yeah, why. Yeah, you could be. I mean, you could have done this on the phone, honestly. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe so we'll do sorry. it another time where you can actually have a picture. Yeah. Uh, if there next time go. you invite me anywhere, I'm not coming. Send us a send us a good little <laughs> profile picture. We'll put it. Maybe we'll put that up there. We'll be like, Perfect. Yeah. There yeah. we go. <laughs> um, so down in Brantford, opened up, you said, two, about two and a half years ago. Yeah, October um, of 21. Okay. Um, now... Did you have, we're talking ATF stuff now. Yeah. Um, your IOI, did you have like an inspection and everything? How do they set up your FFL or did they do everything through Zoom or I think it was actually Skype? Um, I believe. Because that's COVID times. I believe they 20, met us at the house. It was 21. Okay. So they, they had just started person? coming around. Again? Yes, because yeah. I was 21. All, no. I. We know you're not 21. No. Um, because my guy came to my to the yeah, shop. Yeah, you left that one open. I could have added to it, but I decided <laughs> yeah, let me let that go. Yes, please. Um, but <laughs> no, they came out to me, so I think because I'm so right did behind you have a, him. A pleasant process in that? Yeah, actually, um, yeah, okay. it was pretty simple. Actually, um, I believe the woman's name was Nancy. She was very informative. You know, here's another thing too that I don't know if you guys noticed too. It's not like they give you a handbook and say, "Here, this is how you no. properly no. work your FFL or, or a business in general." This is like, there's no handbook on how to start a small business, no, and how to be an FFL and what to do. Like a lot of this is asking other people, making those relationships with other stores, correct, and then making and then. I mean, I the other day I called my IOI because I had an automatic question because, um, like, I haven't dealt with that. I have my SOT license, but yeah, there's no there's no booklet that says as an FFL ATF guidelines. It gives you there's AT- resources, but it you g- have to dig through the well, resources, and it'll give you guidelines, but they're very broad. Yes, yeah. you know, make model, but it, you have to you have to read the forms. You have to learn, and yeah. even on the forty four seventy three. For us, you know, I read the whole back, all those back pages for what each question means because I have to explain it to customers. Yeah. So you have to understand what all those are and how that works and, you know, when the audits are going to happen. But they're very, it's very blasé. Have I you guess had one yet? the best way to put it. No. Do you I know. Do I want to admit that? <laughs> I haven't either. Um, I mean, I think on paper, are you, are you an 01 or an 07? 07. Okay, so I'm an 01. 
Um, O1s, I think, are every three years or so, they say, and O7s can be every year. Well, he's got an O1 and an O7. Oh, okay. Because so the OS, yeah, I mean, they'll come in and audit, I think, a specific license, not both. Could Correct. be wrong. No, you know? because even with Separate where books. I'm located with, because I had said to him, so if you come in to, say, Bob. the store, yeah. and I'm in the same building, yeah. I figured they would audit me at the yeah, same right. time, and they said absolutely not. So from what I've heard, it's a lottery system, <laughs> kind of like bingo. Perfect. It, they're in there, and a ball gets picked, and that's who gets audited. At least it, I'm sure I'll win at some point. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, I, you, there could be a hundred raffle tickets. I'll buy ninety nine of them and still lose. <laughs> Oof, I want to. I want to know where you're putting your tickets then. <laughs> yeah. So I'm gonna go buy that one, right? Um, do you use a? I know you're not computer savvy. Do you use electronic or we use, uh, we use Fastbound? Okay, so I use um Gunstore Master, um which I absolutely love. Um, I know some of the stories use fastbound. It's same similar things. Um, I can do my forty four seventy threes electronically. I know the ATF just released, um, an, I guess their own application for that. Um, oh, yeah, okay. the can sh- should have shown up in your email about two weeks ago, guys. Didn't see it. Um, yeah, so they I released an electronic anything. copy of a forty four seventy three that kind of like a PDF, so you can type it in and do everything, and then print it and have them sign it. I guess I didn't download it because I, my software does that already. Well, um, his if he has fastbound, that'll do it too. If he the chose only to. Only complaint yeah. I have with fastbound is the font is so small, and you cannot. I mean, I've tried getting them to change that. It's a very simple request, but you can't change the font. Maybe make it as big as it can as that block, and then yeah. the, the bigger, the more wording or text you put in it, the smaller it should get. But right. you know, hmm. I mean, I'm getting old. Uh, I can't see yeah. like I used to, and. You know, mm-hmm. and then, you know, what if there's a mistake? How do you fix it? I mean, you got to make a photocopy of it, you know. and So, like, if, if they it's, lock it, it, you're done. So, my system, right, if they answer, what is this, 21A, are you buying the gun for you? Right? Yeah. It's much longer than that, obviously. That's the simple terms. Right. And a lot of them will answer no because, you know, all the other questions are probably, I guess, no's. Um, so, they'll answer them and they'll be like, yes, or they'll be no, right, because... They just, no, 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 They no, don't no. read it. They don't read it. Or they don't understand it, but most of the time they don't read it. Cool. See you later. Just, just, for, sale denied. Just, just for the record, though, I probably read that 300 times, and I still don't understand it. No, to be totally yeah. honest, the F, the Especially ATF. With the new ones they Yeah, promote. 21B the and 21N are horrible. Yeah. They, they have, well, it's been like that from day one, though. If you read the questions, many of the questions, the way they go about it is, is that you could do it really clear and concise, and they argue don't. a fugitive from justice, yes or no. Correct. Six words, nice and simple. I think it's a weird question, but it's easy. Wait, it's funny. I had somebody ask me, "What does that mean?" Oh God, all the time. Yeah. And I went, "Are you in trouble and you're running from the law?" They're like, "Well, no." I'm like, "So what's your answer?" Uh, you know. They also don't understand the one where, um, "Have you ever?" Uh, the words. Give them back your U.S. citizen, yeah. You, yeah. whatever. I can't yep. remember that word now. But people go, what does that mean? It's like, well, have you ever, ever given up being a U.S. citizen? Yeah. No. Okay. Green Day did. The band Green Day. Mm-hmm. Yep, yeah. the lead singer did. Horrible. Yep. But they've I mean, done even not a good band either, but. I mean, they changed the 4473s <laughs> again. Yeah. yeah. But. Well, they moved. It was 21 A, B, and C that were bad. Now it's 24 A, B, and N. Well, because they added they moved N in N. There. But when they had the last two that you leave blank if you were a U.S. Yeah. citizen, yep. you didn't find that they out until the last question. Yeah. Right. But they you were supposed to leave 21. Wow. You know what I never really thought of until right now? The paper forms, because I've never done any paper forms for that. It's always been electronic. From day that, one. Okay. From day one. That question doesn't come up if you answer that you're a U.S. citizen. Oh. It automatically leaves it blank. doesn't give anyone the option. Right. I've had people ask me, like, oh, like, I wasn't able to ask, answer that one. I'm like, well, if you read it, it's not applicable to you. Right. But on, on man, paper, paper forms, that's got to mess people because up. Because the first one doesn't say anything, so you yeah. think you'd answer it. And then the next one says, leave the next two okay. Blank, yeah. And it's like, why would you do it that way? So if you answer yeah. that question on, on the electronic side, <clears throat> if you answer it wrong, are you done for the day? Yeah. Oh, wow. Only, I denied the sale. Only if it's locked. If they go Well, it auto certified. locks my system. But see... Gun store it, master will auto deny the sale. So like if they it hit continue, in, if you stop yeah, them if before before they sign the form, correct, they have a chance to review the entire form. 
So and they're, that's they're, you're not printing it down, having them sign it. You're signing it electronically. So correct. A, three sections: A, B, C. There's D and E in there too, but A is I'm inputting the gun, right? So I scan my tag that I've put into my system, and it auto populates everything. Oh, B nice. is you're an- entering your name and answering the questions. Customer, yep. And they do all that stuff themselves, and then they get to review screen. They scroll through it, make sure everything looks good. They hit continue. It brings up another screen where they sign on the physical screen. And once you hit submit, that's it. You're Whatever locked. is there, it's locked. But and then it comes stop, back to me. If you stop them after the continue, they Yeah, can but people go don't listen. It. No. Well, and that's on them. But no. 99% do no, if you I say don't fill hit out the form the same way twice half the time. <laughs> so <laughs> after that, it comes back to the C section where then I input the um, permit pistol number. permit, the driver's license info. Um, I hit update, and then I'm allowed to do my next check. And then I go and put in, you know, I went to do the next check on this day. This is the author number, you know, approved. And then I sign date it. You're printed. doing it all on the GL system at that point. Yeah, all in, state. all in there. Well, well yes you know? and no. The, the yeah. 4473 is not on the GL system. The right. GL system only runs the DPS-3. DPS three. Yep. Right. So, so I'm how, doing that simultaneously. Oh, you're doing it simultaneously. Yeah. All right. So it, well, the, normally what we they do talk now. talk to each other then? Yeah. No. Nor, no. 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 Oh. We input the number. So yeah. we type in now. Once you get the approval Understand. authorization, yep. then we type in the numbers. Okay. Normally what I do is while they're running, while they're typing in their paperwork, I run their background check. And I leave it there in that little authorization, authorization <laughs> section where it says register or cancel. Because if they mess up that number, cancel. Right, yep. kill the number, move on. Right, right. If they're good and like B is all good, then I click register and I fill the DPS three form. Now, mind you, we might have lost some of the customers on yeah. this because we're getting deep into our how side. federal paperwork works, guys. Right. This so understand. We're just trying to talk about on the gun store side and what the employees are doing there. Um, if you're thinking about opening a gun store and you were like, what did they just say? <laughs> Maybe reconsider <laughs> what you're thinking, guys. So, you know, let us that's a good question. Let's back up to where we, we, we started before about the IOI in the beginning. They don't give you any, like, roadmap on how nope. to run your FFL properly. No, And you said about how it needs to run a business. Now, I've been in business 34 years, mm-hmm. probably longer, um, of old multiple businesses. And it's paperwork, paperwork. It's... And you have to have good paperwork. Organization. Mm-hmm. And, and not just in this business, but in, in general business guidelines... At, at all times, you know, and, and, you know, simple sometimes is better mm-hmm. depending in the gun industry is just not simple. There's no. nothing simple about it. Well, and then you put the state regulations that were actually increased in June when the governor's bill went through. And now we're under even more scrutiny to do oh, everything yeah. the way more we have eyes to do. looking at every little and T, having, yes, I. which I'm not against having the ability to have oversight. Right. Okay. I'm not against that. As a general rule, I am against the amount of hands oversight and stuff well, like that. Th- that's like we were talking earlier before the show is that you could have 12 lawyers in the room. They all have a different opinion. Correct. I, I kind of agree with you, but, and that's the problem here is you have more oversight and you have more opinions because they write the law or the rule or whatever it might be. And then they come in and they tell you, oh, no, you got to do it like this. So you do it like that. And then the next IOI or someone comes in and they tell you, yeah. oh, no, you got to do it like this. So, well, wait a minute. That guy told me to do it like that. I and an IOI, guys, just so you know, as, the, as our listeners, IOI is our AT, ATF representative. Industry op- right. So it's the person that we deal with. And every gun store has one that's assigned to them. Um, and it's not necessarily the same one, even if it's a, somebody 20 minutes away from you. We all have, it's just who came up that moment when you opened up your store. Um, and that, it gets into, because it's also weird, back in the Industry day. Industry is operations investigators, IOIs. There you go. Can never get that last I. <laughs> but, you know, back years ago, if person holding the FFL, so the the store or the FFL holder, filled out paperwork but made mistakes. Like, say they didn't do the right make or model. They didn't, you know, realize that things were different. You look at, you know, certain guns and they're just Rock Islands are Rock Islands. Well, they're not really Rock Islands. It's Armscore. Um, So if you made those, those mistakes, the ATF agent coming in to do the audit would go, okay, well, you need to fix this next time. We understand you. this was not 
purposely negligent. This was just a mistake, a clerical error. Now they're getting much more harder. Yeah, but you know, you go <coughs> arms corps. It doesn't say it anywhere on the box. It doesn't say it on the gun. It says Rock Island. No, on the gun it does. Mm-hmm. If you look underneath the barrels, it's AP International. Yeah. And it's arms. It's st- something I learned from Michelle because I was like, oh, it's Rock Island. Rock Island like, Armory is the main, not the manufacturer. No. The importer. Or no, no, they're not even anything they're on it. They're nothing. On. They're, they're yeah. nothing on it. It's um, ACP. Philippines. Right. Philippines. And then, and then it's the a- something. So it's not Arms Corps then. It's no, something it's neither else. Of them. It's neither yeah. of them. Arms Corps is the abrev- That's like the slang term. Yeah. But it's not. It's AP International, I think, um, is Nevada. I think that's who in API brings them in. And um, <clears throat> ACP? Is it ACP? So why yeah. do you have Rock, Rock Island Armory on the firearm? I think at one point in time years ago there was a Rock Island. Well, there is Rock Island. The um, PF 14s, which are the shockwave versions, those are Rock Island Armory USA. So they may have been making them at one point in time, and it just kind of rolled over, and they never lost that. Because some of them still say Rock Island on them, but they're not make the make and manufacturer are not. That's not what it is. It's under manufacturers ACP (coughs) Philippines. There you go. The importers AP International USA. Yes. He's um, gonna be writing that down. Yeah, like, Fuck <laughs> shit. <laughs> it's um, no, it it's funky. Yeah. It's a lot of them. It's the same as the Turkish shotguns. You yeah. have Hans Group. Jesus. You have there the Sila the Sila well, we just, call it, just yeah. call it Turkey. You, yeah, but there's so many imports. Yeah, right. But the, like, you, they're not, and they're not. You look and go, okay, that's a Sila. No, it's there. All of those are well, different it's too. It's like T sauce. Yep, yes, those two. You know. Do you put tea sauce as a manufacturer? Yes, I believe. I don't know. I don't carry those. I pieces can't remember. Of crap. I Actually, don't. They've gotten better. People, some you either love them or you hate them. I'm on the hate it train. Well, <laughs> I, I'm, a, I'm on the honest. train where you get what you pay for. Yep. Well, yes. Nineteen eleven for a uh, five six hundred dollars. Whatever they're going for compared to a Colt at twelve hundred is no comparison whatsoever. Yeah. It's not a bad gun for the price point. So Beretta, you got to be careful. You got Pietro Beretta. You got the Italy version of Beretta. Yeah, you have U.S. You got, Beretta. Yeah, you got U.S. Beretta. You got. Ugh, no, they It's one of those things where you actually yes, like Springfield. Here's are not, a fun fact for you guys. Do you know that all their striker fire Springfields are not made by Springfield? Nope. HS Products in Croatia. Who's ever heard of them before? So any of your polymer. Yeah. It's not like their 1911s are Springfield USA, mm-hmm. and so are their M1s, their M1As. Their rifles and stuff like rifles. that, but none of their polymer, yeah. striker, fire handguns. It's yeah, so when you got customers that uh, they, they come in and they, um, you know, they want to buy a firearm and fill out the paperwork, they're like, oh, I got to fill out paperwork? Uh, yeah. Like, uh, you, yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you have a I, pistol permit? Well, I need a pistol well, permit. That's another thing we get all the time because you used to be able to buy a rifle, mm-hmm. okay, and I've had arguments with people in the store saying they can buy it. They want to buy ammo. I can't sell you ammo even with a certificate. I had a Not guy. The last 10 years, you gotta have You got to have a certificate. Tr- I had a guy transferring a shotgun from PSA, all right, which is amazing that they sent anything, but it's because it was a pump-action shotgun. Yep. And PSA told him, he talked to customer service, oh, yeah, you don't need a permit to buy a uh, shotgun in Connecticut. No. And he comes in here, argues with Brian, my manager, and Brian's like, you you need a pistol permit or a long gun eligibility certificate, which is a long gun permit, yep. to buy this. Mm-hmm. And so he calls PSA again, and they're like, no, you don't. And I'm like, dude, like I, at that point, he comes back in to argue again, and I'm like, you need a pistol permit Here's or a law. long gun permit. I am not transferring this to you, and if you can't possess it, you have to pay me to ship it back. Yep. Because I don't do things for free, and in my policy, which you is can't. all over online, after 60 days, that item is mine. And you incur a dollar fee of storage after 30 days. So you get a free 30 days after that. It's, I'm not running a charity here. Well, you can't. The right? margins, that's another thing, too, that customers don't understand. Yeah. The margins are so thin. You want to do volume. If you're doing volume, <coughs> great. We're small stores. Yeah. Yep. You know, we're not these big box stores that, you know, have unlimited funds, we'll say. Yeah. So, so w- there's not a lot of markup on firearms. Uh, the percentage is very low, and yep. that's why we have to do that. So when people sit there and go, well, can't you do any better? I, actually, I can't. Mm-hmm. I, there really isn't much room. There's times that you can maybe, but there's most of the time that you can't. There's well, certain They're priced to sell to begin with. They're priced to sell. Yeah, like, i got to pay my rent. 
the in lights. a commercial building, utilities are double Don't, what the people pay upstairs. What about here. the taxes? Hmm. And taxes are fun. And insurance. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Insurance has right. cr- gone up, I think, in oh, all my nuts. business. My yeah. properties, now they finally got caught up to what the cost of goods are, and now it's cost of labor because labor has gone up probably 40%. Minimum I'd wage, say. that too. Yeah, 15, right. 16, 69 an hour right <coughs> now, minimum wage. Yeah. So, you know, there's that. I don't know when that got approved either. It, I knew it was up to 50, like it was getting no, up to 15. And I was it like, was supposed to be 15 and went and up stop. more? It was 15 and stop. To I stop, and now Lamont said, "Oh, yeah. then we're going to go to fifteen sixty nine, Which I don't know how you could do that because that didn't pass legislation. Went to fifteen, unless I yeah. read it right. Uh, well, I'm co- yeah, I'm I, again confused on that because I'm like, when did minimum? When did they pass that? I think you when got they said that. so. And then all the small fees. So here's another Q item Credit here. Card fees. Not just those types of fees, but just fees for. So you go into business, you think, okay, great. Uh, I'm going to sell this for this amount. Uh, my rent is this. My heavily fixed prices. Then you've got all the small stuff that you forgot about, like uh, fees for, for um, sh- um, what's the word I'm looking for? For Like you said, you have fees for your credit card fees. You have 3 to 5 percent you have to pay, yep. the processing fee. Then there's the membership <coughs> fee. And then there's the fee for, depending on how many guns you have in your system, you have to pay that membership yes. fee for that. And then you have all these tiny little fees that come. Then you don't even think, oh, the fire marshal wants an extra. Uh, oh, no, it gets better. Because up until last year, you could get your resale certificate, which you have to have from the town in order to have sell right. firearms and any yep. kind of handguns. That's got to be not signed pistols. up by the chief of police. Correct. So we used to be able to get that, no problem. You just filled out an application, then you could send it up to the state. You were all good. Now it's a $200 hit. So oh, yeah. Oh, that's two hundred dollars right there. LLC. Your, F- your LLC is what eighty, one hundred and twenty something Eight, like 80 that. Eighty every year. You got to yep. file your your. your then you've got your FFL, which is going to run you. I think it's two hundred dollars for an O one. Yeah. Then you have an SOT. If you have an SOT, that's another five hundred every a year. year. You know these fees add up and over oh, time. What about Connecticut paid leave? So. Huh. You know, you got to make sure you have the Connecticut paid leave fee. And if you don't do it or you do it late, it's fifty dollar fifty dollar fine, and they don't care. Nope, they don't care. I mean, sales tax. What about sales tax? Every we pay our sales tax every month. That's one thing you do not yeah. want to get behind. That's what I do and too. And it's such a month. kick in the nag. Yeah, you think you got month. this money in the account? Yeah, oh, great. Poof. And you're like, poof. Um, yeah. yeah, you know. And, and like, they're so, like, well, you so collected you, it already. Yeah, and I yeah, paid but it my goes bills. into my regular bank account. Like, <laughs> it doesn't go separately. And I guess like. There's a program I have Clover for my POS, so there's a program to do that. But then I have to go pay a hundred dollars a month for this program. Why? Again, well, well, it comes then, down like, to the fees. And then you got your gas bill for the heat, say, and it's, oh, yeah. you, you, you used a hundred dollars worth of gas. You're charging you three hundred dollars to deliver it yeah. there, and so you know, so you got a four hundred dollar bill, say, and it's paper. It's, it's, ink. What about ink. your alarm systems? Yep. Your monthly. Oh, that's the other thing too. The ATF no, requires a certain level of alarm and cameras. So we got really good cameras. I mean, and then the police are constantly going. Oh, there's an accident down the road. Can you re- and it's, I don't have time for you, yep. dude. <laughs> Bro, come on. We sound like we're just witching and bitching. Yeah. But, but these but are, are things. <laughs> we are. <laughs> we are. These are things to consider when you guys, like, buy guns and you go into a store and, like, it's not just, oh, yeah, no, they're making $100 on this gun. Like, yeah, we're probably making $100 on the gun if we're lucky. It's the costs. How rent, many guns you like got to sell? The, all these things. How many guns to break even? Well, how many guns you got sitting on the wall? That money's already out. Yeah. There's no floor plan for that. You are pay, You already yep. paid for that. We have hundreds of thousands of dollars on our wall. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? And mm-hmm. that's everything, too. It's oh, just sitting there. Yeah. yeah. And, th- and then then when the customers get really mad at you is when they come and smell like cannabis. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, guys, let me be utterly clear on this. If you walk into a gun store smelling like pot, you're a idiot. Like like you took it up the in nice the driveway. That was the word I was coming up with. Like yes. you're in the parking lot in the car, just totally free yeah. base. Expect in there. to be asked to leave. Yeah, um, I have, and we can't by federal law. If there happens to be somebody else in that store, and we are obviously you're under the influence at that point. Um, and, and even if we think you're under the influence, I had a guy that smelled like he was out drinking all night long. Like, buddy, I, 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 I liability is massive in this well, industry. Because on the other side of this, the <clears throat> ATF agents also go in undercover to different stores periodically just to see if everything's being run the right way. So when 
like we had we used to have it all the time. People go, well, can you just tell me what the answer is for this on the 4473? I don't nope. know. And I'm like, no, I can't help you. Well, why not? Because I don't know who's sitting in this room. And if I help you, I have now gone against what it yeah. says if you read the directions. So like what we do in the store is well, I'll go over the form with them, with them mm -hmm. start here, especially people who just got their permit. I said, like it says, do you reside in city limits? In Connecticut, you do. Yep. And there's no, unless you live in the middle of somewhere where you've gone outside of city limits, like in the desert, that's when and you live there. That's when it would be, no, I don't live within city limits. But right. everywhere here in, in Connecticut, it's yes. Correct. Okay. Now, if you mess it up, okay, that's an yes easy. Yes or unknown or what I accept. That's what we I do, I don't too. accept no. Yes, right. no. That's not, and people don't even, because. And the form has to be filled out completely. Mm -hmm. And if it's not, don't get mad at us because we have to point it out to you. But I also will sit there <laughs> and I'll go over like the first question and be like, this is asking you, basically, is this firearm for you? You need to read it, okay? The mm -hmm. second question is, do you plan on transferring it to somebody else, right? Or is that maybe tied in the first question now? I'm not sure. It's, it's kind of kind of weird. Um, that's private party. That's question eight. Right, and then, the, and then there's, now it used to be you don't answer the last two in, in the block, and then now I have to go over and see this one here. It says, if you answer yes is when you answer this, but if you answer no, you don't answer. I'm not giving yeah. them the answer. And then the other big question is certification date. Uh, it's today. It's not yeah. the day you were born. You were not certified on your birthday. Because well, they forget to read right above that box that says, I certify. See, I've never had that problem because <sighs> of my electronic system. It does it the day of, unless, like, there's a delay. We had a delay today because the SLFU was down. And so, like, we clicked delay, and now we can't transfer it until they he They were having an office party. That's why they were Well, it, you know, <laughs> with AT&T and everything. Um, but it, we put in delay, and now you have to go and recertify. Correct. So, but my system tells me all this. Mm -hmm. These stores that have been around for years, and they're doing paper, and 100%. they're making mistakes... Like, their systems here, like, my, yeah, but my gun store master cost $900 for two years. But sometimes. Worth every penny. I know, and I, I get that, but sometimes it's just, it's every, there's different avenues. So if the business owner chooses to do paper, we're going to see, yes, there's going to be more mistakes on certain things, other things not so much, and vice versa. But whatever works for that business is okay and good, we're just, it would be nice if the customers understood that we don't just pull paperwork out of our butts and say, hey, can you fill this out you know, for our yeah. own personal records? This is stuff we're required to do, and we're required to do it in a certain way. Yeah, and then after the sale is even done, it's tr you triple check your paperwork before you, pay, you file it. So we go through three people, and then when it gets to me, I can kind of breeze through it, but I'm really good at finding like certification date issues or why well, did you check this or this is not really good and then I got to call them back to redo the paperwork and then that's a, that's that's what do you mean I got to come back well yeah you didn't answer it right and you, you you can sometimes I think even electronically still make that mistake no can they if you're doing electronic which okay here's if the they problem. put in the wrong address which I've had people do yeah. on the electronic system and it is wrong right and or they get their expiration date. Hell, I've done it putting it into the computer where I put the uh, expiration date of the driver's license or their DOB or yep. whatever yeah. it might be. We I all mean, make mistakes, but it's easy. why you fixed. go through multiple people to catch these things. Correct. Yeah. Like, but the thing about also is with the computers, you need space. If you're a busy shop, you need multiple computers. You need multiple spaces. Mm -hmm. you, you got a little bit more leeway with the paperwork per mm -hmm. se. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, and, and then we have to keep that paperwork forever. Yeah, right. now. Right. Yeah, forever. I don't know about the state paperwork, but I'm pretty sure same it's the same thing. Yeah. Same thing. And then, so now the other thing is the state passed a law where it's a state firearms license that they're going to start charging us a fee, I think, this coming year, um, where they got basically... A, a, did that get passed? That I did get passed. But I, I think that's what I was talking about. That is the... The state firearms license is actually your resale certificate. Well, you already had to do that prior to the law. There was no cost on it. But they, now they, there's a $200 fee, and that went into effect as of October. Yeah, but what they also want to do is they want to be able to come in and do an inspection, which they already had they the can. power to do that. No, but that did pass, too, but that's not a firearms license thing. They still, with this new... What so it's a money grab. Just say, hey, let's go take $200 so we can put it in a row that doesn't exist. and it goes into a general fund, I'm sure. Not to be political, but we're being political. Correct. And then they also pass not where correct. they can come in... Correct. <laughs> well, it, what bothers me is that, like, ATF has guidelines, okay? They can do an audit, and they say it has to happen once within this time frame, okay? 
and they can come well, sometimes in. Sometimes doesn't even happen then. Correct. I know something like eight years without an inspection. Yeah. Well, I and, think. Well, you, you know the mess they were in though yeah. at that point because they were like, "Well, we found these problems. Let's go back another year. We found that problem." If you if they say they just pulled the a year, I have publicly said this before. Like, I wish, you know, two months in, three months in, they come in and do like a soft audit. Like, hey, these are the mistakes because you're new. Like, these this are the mistakes. What we're this is what you need to do to fix them. Like, you've now been told what to do. Mm-hmm. Do that. Right. And, like, I don't want to do anything illegal or anything wrong. Right. So, but if I don't know because I'm a human and right. I only have so much brain power in a day, well, and you've how, never are you been, gonna t- how are you going to let me know? It's, like, it, the so difference d- between a firearms having an FFL and just a business is businesses require certain things and you have audits and you have IRS and you have, you know, those fun alphabet groups. Um, and then you go throwing with a firearms. Now you've got a whole different set of yeah. parameters and you're right. They don't, we talked about that. They give you a very just broad. bland, broad, yeah. They don't you give know. you anything. It's like, here, here's your license. Go, go sell guns. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's and then they get mad at the people who mess up. Like, um, so I don't know if you guys know this. I was doing a little digging the other day, and um, with a shovel. Yeah, um, <laughs> I'm in the, in the internet. Okay. And um, any store that's faced revocation and that has gone through full revocation, their entire report's available online. Do you know that revocations are up over five hundred percent? They yes. are, but so I have actually. I pulled up here because I'm like, all right, like what can we get? Revocation is uh, for the listeners is when the FFL um, is getting pulled, um, and there's a process to go through. There's a hearing to go through. Um, but what can people get that done for revocation started, uh, transferring gun to a prohibited person? Well, if you run background checks, that's can't happen. Uh, failure to conduct a required background check. Okay. Uh, falsifying records such as firearm transaction forms. I'm going to come back to that one. Uh, failing to respond to an ATF trace, um, and then refusing to permit ATF to conduct an inspection. Well, that's that last one's pretty dumb. Uh, falsifying records such as firearm transaction forms, I think, is where they use that as a broad term. So, if your firearm record is missing a T, right, or if an tapped, I, they never right? did. This is new under Biden. They're saying that's falsifying your record. Correct. Clerical. It's not falsifying a record. Nope. If I go and change your yes and no question or something, like yes. okay, that's falsifying a record. But, but you forgot to I. write. You know, uh, 06489. Clerical clerical error. That is ridiculous. That is utterly ridiculous. But. And they should be held accountable for that. But the the difference in Connecticut versus across the country is ATF has these requirements. Yes, BS, we call it whatever we want to call it, okay? It's right now the way the ATF is handling things is a little absurd, but that's because that's what their boss tells them to do right now. Um, But. In Connecticut, on top of that, we also have the issue with the state. And with that law that they passed, they also have the ability to revoke our licenses, Mm -hmm. which they never did before. But now, and that's what scares me, is because we all know Connecticut top dogs don't like guns, okay? So there's, again, it's very broad when you read the law as to what they can do and how often. And if they decide that you're a high-volume store and they don't like you, they could be in your store every week. There's no parameter saying they can't. Well, this is how I feel about it. All the gun manufacturers were right here. Yes. Mainly in New Haven, but right here in Connecticut. They They chased them out of the state. And we are next. We are the ones with the target of it. They are looking to chase us out of the state, chase us out of business as fast. Well, so it's basically how long can you hold on? Well, that's why you want the customers to work with the guys who are work. You know, the small yeah. mom and pop or smaller shops. Well, that's what I was saying about the online here. stuff. You keep buying online. There's not going to be many shops to transfer your gun yeah. to because we're all going to go out of business. That's right. You and know? then there'll be no place because mm. they can't ban guns per se as a whole. But they can make it so that there's not so, so many you places this is to what, buy them. This is what worries me in general and gives me, I don't know, some form of anxiety. <laughs> like, this is how I make money. It's how I support my family. Yep. Right? It's our world. And I'm getting attacked for exercising a constitutional right following all the laws that we need to do. And I'm still a target. Yes. It's ridiculous. Yeah. And, and then like, you go back to the paperwork part of it, too, is... 
it, it, you didn't like say you made a mistake and it was with, without without malice. Yeah. It right. wasn't like you did it on purpose. It was a very simple mistake, and they're going to throw you in jail and ruin your livelihood. Yeah. I mean, no, it doesn't. It, how does that even go through a court of law? And then you hear because we're in Connecticut, other stores or we'll just say other stores that have had issues. And then get somebody else to get their license and they're back up in two months. But they've also changed like, the ATF. Yes, that does happen. But the ATF did. Uh, not yeah, but that's this a lot of revenue year. to lose in two months. You could be out of business just for that. Yeah, but they're not. But they've changed it now where there's different guidelines. It used to be, say, you know, husband and wife team. So husband's FFL got revoked. Wife could come in, take over the FFL, take over all the inventory. They've changed that. No longer can that happen. Um, so I don't. Somebody completely different. Yes. What if it's the person, the responsible party? From what I understood when I read and the research I had done, it has to be unaffiliated. So somebody completely new. And if you don't have that, it used to be where you could take the inventory and put it into your own personal collection because it was yours. You owned it. You right. had the store. Yeah, but they're going to pull your license, your now permit now too. They don't even do that. You have to actually have it all destroyed. Oof. You know how much money I have hanging on the wall? Now, I don't know. Me crazy. I don't know how much they're following on all of this, but this is the avenue that the feds are trying to work at. Um, which well, hopefully November ends up with a decent result. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love having an FFL. I love being in this industry. I love the whole, I love the camaraderie. I like the people. I like the educating. Mm. I like all of this, but it is not conducive. It's not conducive, and it's not – I don't have a love like I used to. I do it because I'm passionate about the Second Amendment. Um, the amount of work that goes into having an FFL, even if, like me, I don't sell guns, okay? It's still a lot of work. So what I tell people is you you open a business, you run your business. Sooner or later, it starts running you. Yep. It's a, it's a big snowball that keeps going downhill, packing up on more snow, and you cannot stop it. There's nothing you can do but ride it to the bottom. I figure I just do the best job I can, and if they come in and have a problem, like because my T wasn't crossed, well, I'll deal with it at that point. But if I keep all of my, you know, I'm one where I'm a stickler, and I know Josh is, and I know you are, where you know you don't let things slide and think, okay, well, we'll take care of it later, because that is where your snowball gets out of control. Well, just business in general, I'm saying, not even the paperwork uh, as far as compliance is concerned. It's just... Owning any, I don't give a crap if you own a landscaping business. Mm. The phone never stops ringing if you're <laughs> good, if you're or if you're too cheap. That's another thing too. You know, you get good service at the small places. I right. mean, we kind of pride ourselves, and we're not a tact, tactical shop at, by no means. We're more World War One, World War Two, even older. We like wood. <laughs> All right, you like you do you, do you like a plastic table to eat your dinner? No, I like a wood table to eat my dinner. I like wood hanging on the wall. You know, there's something about a nice heavy wood gun that goes bang. You know, there's something about it. You give me this plastic thing. I'm like, what the heck is that? They're like, oh yeah. So I'm, someone I'm, doesn't sell Glocks, clearly. <laughs> Actually, I own I own a early Gen three Glock 27 40 cal. I think I got Jesus. it in 1993. I've shot twelve to fifteen thousand rounds through it at least. Wow! Um, it's never broken. I never cleaned it until not this past July. July before, I figured, well, I'm wearing it in the store. Let me clean it to make sure it's, uh, you know, the well, that's the thing too in the store too. We don't really carry open all the time either. We we've been covering it up because you know we're just, I don't know. I just I just feel like we don't have to be that guy that's got you know I'm I'm big. Gun guy and I don't know, man. Gun. You're you're an old white dude. You ain't open carrying a 1911. What makes what old. makes what makes me white? Ken, yeah, there's no picture here. <laughs> God there, damn it! <laughs> this is all on. It's like call me Irish because my hair is red, and you know in Sicily it's called a ginger. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was gonna make a ginger joke, but we're just gonna. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Jim. Oh, Jim's our website, guys. Yes. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Yes. So so if you're thinking about opening an, uh, uh, an FFL. Do your homework. I I will. I like I said we were saying before about other gun stores. I am willing to help any gun store out there and give them any bit of information if I can. If they they're looking for a firearm that I happen to have and they could sell it, hey, come pick it up. Mm -hmm. Come get. Don't even come get it. Charge your customer whatever. Get me another one. Mm -hmm. I'm fine with that. Uh, if I have ammo, which we have sometimes some uh, oddball ammo stuff because we're like we deal with odd, the odd and curious, I'll call it. You the know, old, the weird dudes, the, the weirdo guns. stuff. Yeah. yeah, you know, I love my M1 Grands. Who doesn't? Yep. 
you know. I own an M1D, which is, you know, a sniper. You know, I, huh. I, I, those are my personal private collections. But know what you were saying before how I wanted to say this before, and Josh is still um, more young in business itself, per yep. se. But me being in business for as long as I, I have been, um, you lose what you love because your hobby has become your job, and then you don't enjoy yeah. it anymore. I'm just looking for the hammer because we hit that nail on the head. Yeah. Yeah. You just, okay. you know, yeah. and, and I'm, I used to go fishing and boating and hunting. I haven't hunted in a few years, or quite a few years. All I do is work trying to keep this train from crashing at the end of the railroad yeah. or I'm coming off the tracks. Like, so I used to go to the range often yeah, ever since 2020 where this really blew up and everything like three, four times a year, maybe. Yeah. Like I belong to Bristol fishing game. Like, yep. 12, 15 minutes that way. Like, we'll I, go, but... I used to race motocross. I don't even enjoy looking at my... I don't even want... Uh, so, I mean, I do have a street bike, so I've already made plans, and every year I say the same thing, and it never happens, that I'm going out more often, and I, the wind therapy... I'm dying for wind therapy Wind therapy right is now. awesome. You know, I'm dying for wind therapy right now. I have a car. I like to drive. You know, it's got a blower and stuff like that, but I've had this stuff from years ago. I'm, I'm thinking about just selling it all because I don't enjoy nothing no more. It's like all I do is work. So that's something you got to think about. You have to have a true, true passion for running mm. your own thing because, you know... I have a business that I make a paycheck. Well, I can work for you and make a paycheck and then go home with, with my less cool headaches and, and just do what I want and have a hobby. Yep. It's like my hobbies have become my way of life and it's just not fun anymore. Even when I go fishing, if you know, when we go fishing during fishing season, you are a fisher of men. I heard not anymore. No, no, I got locked down. Yeah. Matt's Matt said that you might've been the shark, but he's the whale. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, <laughs> But when we go, when we go fishing or we go on vacation or we go anywhere, I mean, my husband and I are talking business all the time. It just never stops. Yeah, but you could write off that dinner because you're talking business, right? <laughs> yeah, I bet you, you I have could. no idea what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> we'll tell you. That'll be the after show. Okay? Oh, great! Right, right. We can record that. <laughs> no, oh, go thank God. Uh, I tell I say it every time. I told you when you came in the pre-show and the after show. That's yep. where it's at. You want to be a fly in this and, wall. And I got to be honest with you. I'm not the guy that, that likes to be center of attention. I'm not the type of, I never did. I don't want to be out front, even though at times that I, I am. I don't even realize I am. I'd rather be the guy with my back against the wall, listening to you, all you weirdos talk about stuff that doesn't matter. Like, you know, I got this K53 compensator and this, you know, uh, extended clip magazine that I bought on eBay and uh, Huan Chun makes this thing and I got this over here. Look how cool it is. I got this uh, gold-plated freaking trigger. I'm like, you know what? Here's cool. another... Let, let's, go, let's just hit this quickly. Self-defense firearms that you're carrying don't need to be tacked out. You're, and I teach this when I teach classes. I said, what is your... Distance of defense. What is your distance of, of safety that you feel? Somebody's got a knife. Is it 10 feet? Because they can close that up in literally 2.2 seconds. Mm -hmm. So what is your, you know, you can't, you're not going to get in a, t in, a, in a parking lot shootout like the John Wicks, you know, they got pulls and lasers and all that stuff. No, because in the state of Connecticut, you can't just be, you know, shooting back because, you know, you're getting shot at. It's if you can take some personal. Yeah, you always have a duty to retreat. <laughs> Yeah, but duty to retreat. Yeah, and do do you really want to kill somebody? Do you really want to shoot anybody? I mean, you're in for a world of hurt there. Yep. So with that being said, you know, you wear your guns. You want a cool gun to take. Those are, for me, for me. Now, I'm not saying that you can't do that, and that's what you choose to do. But for me, my cool guns I bring to the range, mm -hmm. okay? my ca I carry two guns. I carry a, a compact Kimber 1911, and I carry. There um, it is. <laughs> Sorry. Wow, that goes back to the, we go to the old, old yep. white dude issues. Yep, yep. <laughs> wow, and I carry my Glock, uh, my Glock twenty seven forty is my everyday carry because. And then don't get me wrong, I have holsters for spring, fall, winter, funerals, uh, you know, you know, weddings. You know, I'm going to be getting some glossy black that is going to look like patent leather black. So if you need a fancy holster, you no, let me know. No, I just need something to, to put it away. It's that's it. I'm not fancy. I was trying to I don't have you. any jewelry. I'm only reason why I'm wearing his watch is because my blood pressure is high. <laughs> I got to keep track of it. And by the way, people, I'm going to give you one little thing quick. Celtic sea salt is your friend. Look it up. <laughs> is there a website they should go check that out at? No. Well, do you I sell it in your store? I do not. But I'm telling you right you now, should. in six months, my blood pressure is totally under control because I've been taking Celtic sea salt every day. Well, guys, 
I know we've been a little deep on the FFL side. The legality aspect, yep. And we hope you enjoyed some of this back and forth. Um, and we're sorry we didn't they, have video. They always love the back and forth. I know. We, we do people that come in all the time and they're like, you know what? You and Michelle just have a great... Um, <laughs> rapport. I, yeah, it's rapport. rapport. That's the word. That's yes. A, that's, uh, I guess that's a big word. <laughs> wow. Can you spell rapport? Because I can't. I can. Okay. It's all right. It's all this, when we do the description for it, we use AI. It does it for me. Perfect. <laughs> but yeah, no, Um, I think that's about it. We'll start wrapping this up. Why, you got so, somewhere to go? You got to make dinner or something? I'm just oh. done with you. Oh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. And I thought you liked me. Just a wee bit. <laughs> it's a ginger thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. But if anybody right. is looking for older World War II, World War I guns, make sure you go check out the Marksman's Den in Branford. What's the address for the people? 85 West Main Street, right across from Lake Salt Stall. Which is basically Route 1. Yeah, bottom of Branford Hill there. So, right East Haven Line. All right. Well, I'm Josh. And I'm Michelle. And we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.